Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message on God setting the agenda for your life, on God setting the agenda for your life. Some individuals are setting the agenda for their lives by simply reaching out to mediums, necromancers, witches, sorcerers, all sorts of people who are sexually immoral, they're idolaters, liars. They participate in their share of sensuality. They keep up strife among family members and friends. They're jealous. They have their fits of anger. They're envious people. Some of them are drunks. They participate in orgies. And the Lord warned us, as he has done so many times before, Part of my coming to the Lord was being convicted on Galatians 5, 19 through 21, which says that the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So why is someone setting an agenda based on what these wicked people have put in your ear? Their faith that has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Who has cut in on our brother and sisters race someone has when you are relying on other people to give you the type of information that does not come from the one true God but from their thoughts from their feelings before long you end up going down a path where you feel an emptiness You feel like you can't seem to get a break. You're stressed out. You're frustrated. You're angry over the littlest of things. God will use people to talk to you about going to the doctor because it must be, you know, a health ailment. And then once that issue is resolved, but yet I still have an emptiness. I still feel like I'm not where I need to be. And what has happened in my life? That I'm so far off the mark because you set the agenda. You set the agenda. See, when you give your life over to the one true God, you are then saying, Lord, I need for you to set the agenda for my life. I need for you to move on me to do What is right? You say that I'm supposed to have a righteous life. I need to know what that looks like. And then before long, you're around some individuals that you know is nothing but the Lord. Some individuals that I have come across in my years were known for being their own gods. And they were also praised. They were honored so much good worldly good worldly success was evident but yet no god and for some of us we were confused by it we were jealous we were angry we were upset we were like what is this the lord reminded us not to be jealous not to be covetous that we were going to see in time that their agenda that what they believed to be the right thing was going to turn out to be the wrong thing and let me tell you lord jesus what they said was a blessing turned out to be a curse what they said was success turned out to be failure what they said was good and righteous and wholesome turned out to be scandalous turned out to be deceitful turned out to be dishonest some folks ended up 
prematurely going to their graves, other people ended up in jail. Okay. This is why I urge, I am begging and pleading that some folks drop all this foolishness, the sin, turn into these mediums, these necromancers and all this and allow the Lord to show himself strong. When we got believers who say that they're about God's business, but yet we see something different. They're going to be called out. There is a rebuke that takes place. God puts children of light up to speaking real truth to people. And of course, someone who's guilty doesn't want to hear it. And so off to the next message they go to make them feel good. And I can't deal with this today. I'm tired of being convicted, rebuked and everything else. I remember one lady said, I don't like to go to the church. And I said, well, a lot of us, you know, in our lives, we didn't like to go to the church either. But <laughs> why do you think you don't like to go to the church? And she said, because every time I end up going there, I, I cry and I don't like crying. Do you know that the Lord is working on you? Hello. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to feel that, you know, feeling on the inside that tells you, mm -hmm, once again, you messed up. You called yourself a good mother, but that's not what the kids would say. You see, you called yourself a great worker, but that's not what your manager would say. You know, you said something, you know, you did something. God is using that minister to preach a word, telling you how far away you are from the Lord, even though you call yourself a child of God and it disturbs you. It disrupts you. The demons are saying, let's just cut this off. Let's get away. Let's not continue to come here. This is a bad place. There's nothing but witches and warlocks. And the only witches and warlocks that are going on are the ones that are in and around some individuals. Come on, let's just speak real truth. And a lot of those spirits showed up and showed out with these children of darkness because they're rooted in everything that we mentioned in Galatians 5, 19 through 21 from the sexual immorality, Lord Jesus to the orgies. And some folks say, well, there wasn't two or three in the room with me or five or 10 or 12. It was just me and somebody else. And yes, there's a transferring of spirits that go on with some individuals. You didn't feel the way you feel now until he showed up. Lord Jesus, you see, you didn't feel that way until that crazy making woman showed up, you see, I mean, I can't eat, I can't sleep, I got all these issues going on with me, you know, I mean, I, just, I feel like she's taking over my life and, you know, I don't know, you know, is this love or is this, the Lord will show you if you spend time with him, but you spend more time in getting your fleshly needs met, Lord Jesus. You see, we get some singles who come through here and they want to, you know, just sit back and enjoy a message or two. But this isn't the entertaining channel at times. <laughs> Sometimes we do, but there are times where, mm -mm, you know, we, we got to go there. We got to go there. Folks who don't want God to set the agenda for them. They rather do it themselves, which involves people who may not even call themselves witches, but they got witchy things about them. You see, we got individuals who they're calling the wrong people in their lives, witches. They're calling the wrong people in their lives, everything, but their God given names. They're at war, see, because the disciple of Christ is going to lead you back to God. You see, you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Jesus is Jesus's father is the Lord God, the great I am. The Alpha, the Omega, one in the same, <laughs> you know, God in the flesh when uh, he walked the earth. But uh, we got individuals, though, that they don't want no parts of it. But for those who do 
want God's agenda. Keep listening. So rebellion, common issue, common issue among parents and teens. Let's stay there. We've got parents who are grown up teens and we got teens who wish to grow up. And there's a war in the household because somebody doesn't want to do something once again. There's a war in the household because somebody's being disrespectful. Because somebody thinks they know everything. And so before long, there's the slamming of the doors and there's the cursing and somebody is saying that, you know, they hate someone or there is this leaving out and staying out and all this other foolishness that upsets all parties in the household. What do you think God does with a rebellious believer? Similar to what a parent who is going through so much with a teen will do. Break the will. Call out the rebellion. Expose the foolishness. Set up the consequences. You see, God's people have been so rebellious for so long, saying one thing and doing something else. God is saying, I want to provide you with my will, with my agenda. But every time when I get ready to talk to you, believer, you go off. You're like the teenager rebelling against me. I told you, sit right here and listen. You said, I got this to do, that to do, and I don't have any time. But it's interesting how you can make time for the girlfriend. And you can make time to go look at sports. And you can make time to uh, stroll through TikTok, Facebook, like, comment, listen to yet another YouTube audio. But you don't have time to bring your sin before the one true God. And not only bring your sin, but stop committing the sin, doing everything you can to stop the sin. Lord Jesus, somebody's not ready for this message. It hurts. Because all this time, we got people in our circle who's been praying, Lord, I need to know your will. Lord, guide me, instruct me. Teach me to number my days. Bless me with wisdom. All of these things. And the minute that sin shows up, you don't want to do anything about it. For rebellion is as the sin of divination. This is in 1 Samuel 15, 23. For rebellion is as the sin of divination and presumption is is as iniquity and idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected you from being king. Someone wanted to be a leader. Someone wanted to be Lord Jesus. Woo, Lord. Someone wanted to be a manager. Someone wanted to be a business owner. Someone wanted to be a wife. Someone wanted to be a husband. How was that going for you? Lord Jesus, if you can't listen to the one true God, how in the world are you going to be able to deal with the employees? How are you going to be able, Lord Jesus, some folks lost jobs because they couldn't manage. But yet, Lord, I wanted this and this happened and you could have stopped it. And so they rebelled against the one true God because they felt like God should have, could have, would have. Meanwhile, God said that you didn't want to listen to me when I specifically told you and he used various people, places and things to communicate. And people said, that's all right. That's okay. I don't need to do that. I'm going to do my own way. And then when the consequences showed up, they rebelled against the one true God. Is that your story or someone that you know? And this is why we cannot be around certain individuals because their rebellion is what is stagnating the family. Lord Jesus. There's a time that that woman who is married to that man can have sex with him. Okay. But when he is in error, when he is wrong, when he is doing all sorts of things that go against the one true God, do you know that the Lord can shut down that feeling for her husband? Lord Jesus, somebody's not ready for that. Behind the scenes, you know how many first ladies end up 
not being intimate with their husbands. Lord Jesus, we tell them business today. End up not being intimate with their husbands because their husbands is out there being rebellious. It could be something as simple as, oh, gambling. But you out here and you preaching and teaching and you telling people that they shouldn't and you call yourself winning souls to Christ, but you can't even arrest that thing. It could be something else. It doesn't have to be gambling. It could be the fact that he's a flirt. He always complimenting somebody, but he can't compliment his own wife. He always got some pictures of somebody that he's looking at. Mm -hmm. You see? And God, he sees it all. Ooh, he exposes. He exposes in ways that men and women with their YouTube videos could never <laughs> touch. You see? Someone sits there and they're just rocking back and forth. Lord Jesus. Ooh, Lord Jesus. I just need to know. I just need to know something. And the Lord says, why do you need to know? It's not like you're going to do anything different. Mm -hmm. Why do you need to know so bad? What you going to do? Go in the next room, start cussing, fussing, acting like a complete fool. That's why you don't need to know. See, my agenda right now, the Lord says, for some of you all, is that there is no agenda other than you wallowing in your mess. Somebody doesn't want to hear that. See, there were things that I said to my own mother that after a while, she had her shared conversation with other people about me. And she put her spin to some things. But the truth is, is that when there were cutting messages like this about things that she was doing, because we spent years listening to what we did and how we were in the wrong. But once we got older, can I tell you that the Lord raised us up to speak truth? And when she didn't like it, she acted like a rebellious teen. Okay. Now, I use that to say that you may have a parent around you that does that sort of thing. God will convict that parent on some real truth that is coming out of your mouth. That parent may raise up all sorts of you know what about it. Meanwhile, though, that parent forgot that he or she prayed God's will. Lord Jesus, they wasn't expecting that that child that came out of the womb was going to be the one to bring about God's word. But then when it shows up and it shows up in a way that doesn't make them feel all, you know, happy. All right, I'm getting off the phone. Mm -hmm, here we go. I got other things to do. All right, girl. Mm -hmm, you take care. God bless. You see? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The same attitude <laughs> that she told you about. Now she got that attitude. But it's not me. It's God. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. That's what you say. You see, we even got people that just the other day I saw a young person and I already knew we in pro we, we already got problems because the young person is trying to do big in terms of saying some things that no, you're in error, bottom line, right? And I said, so you're already putting limitations on the Lord and you're just getting started in life, Lord Jesus, you see. Just getting started in life and putting limitations. If anything, you got to be open to what God is saying. And he is still using people, places and things to speak to folks. But when you cut that off and you say that God's not saying and God's not talking, that is your personal experience because that sure isn't mine, Lord Jesus. And you got to do the types of things that God wants you to do in order to hear from him. And first and foremost is, is that you are to fear the Lord. See, this is something that people don't quite understand. So we're going to use some scripture here to amplify it a bit, because I know some people are like, I don't get that. Wait a minute. I don't think I've ever been to a church or talked to a minister who said anything about fearing the Lord. That's because he don't fear the Lord. Okay. A lot of this rebellion people have is because there is no fear. 
You see, sometimes a parent has to parent a child with a bit of fear so that that child will think twice before being disrespectful or jumping on a parent. That's why some kids can jump on parents and the parent is over there covering her head or covering, you know, his face, you see, because there is no healthy fear, fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is what the beginning of knowledge fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs one and seven, you calling me a fool, you calling me a liar, you calling me stupid, you call, are you being disrespectful? Bible says fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay. See, we had some of the elders that was talking about how foolish we were in our youth and we were, but then as we got older, we started noticing that it kind of had this reverse effect. And then the elders were acting like fools. They despised wisdom. They despised instruction. They covered it up with, I've been on this planet for um, 10 years. I mean, I've even said that to my kids, but then the Lord says, sometimes Lord Jesus I'm going to use the mouth of a babe to communicate with you what my agenda is because behind closed doors, you pray, you ask, and I know you don't necessarily like the messenger or you don't feel like the messenger is qualified or the messenger should be degreed or the messenger should talk a certain way or the messenger is a female or a messenger is uh, referring to a pronoun that doesn't necessarily look like or whatever else, but God, can I tell you, can use anybody in any situation for any given period of time. Because sometimes people don't want to receive the word from the priests. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, how many priests have you come across? <laughs> exactly. You know, weeks and weeks and months and months and years and years go by. You don't come across those sort of people. But God will raise up that homeless man to tell you a word while you giving him some money, Lord Jesus. And how and what? <laughs> because sometimes it takes it takes a situation that is unorthodox, if you will, in order to get the attention of someone. I mean, God used a donkey, right, to talk to a man. You believe that? One man told me years ago, I said, absolutely, I do. And then these YouTube videos showed up with all these talking dogs and cats and carrying on. I said, oh, I really believe <laughs> God got a way of using the most unlikely, unlikely as people, animals, places and things to get his message across. Hallelujah. Proverbs 8.13 says the fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. That's God. So somebody shows up talking about how, you know, proud they are, you know, and they're so conceited and they're talking in a certain way. And it, you know, turns off most people. Scripture says that's the way of evil. And then how they switch speech up and they got all sorts of things that they say that's not right. Scripture says God hates. So how is pride, arrogance, you know, a lack of fear of the Lord and all of that? How is that going to be a part of God's agenda? It's not. There's no place for it. And fools, how are fools going to be invited over to the table? You see? To receive wisdom. And yet people will do that and then end up arguing with them and end up being disrespectful. <laughs> Lord Jesus. We got to be mindful of who is around us. Who we're getting words from. Who's speaking into our spirit. Lord Jesus. You see. Even Job, he learned, he learned the hard way. Some folks, they gonna learn the hard way. Job 28, 28. And he said to man, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom and to turn away from evil is understanding. So when I say I'm going to turn away from this sin, I've had enough of this. I got all these people telling me about it because sometimes what is behind closed doors ends up showing up in front of everybody. Okay. Once you have made up in your mind, you're no longer going to do certain things. Okay. You've turned away from evil. There it is. There's your understanding until that man, that woman, or whoever else around you, that rebellious team turns away from that evil. They don't understand. I don't care how many times they tell you. I understand. I understand. I understand. No, you don't. Because if you understood 
my brother in Christ, if you understood my wife, my husband, somebody says, right? Then guess what? You are going to turn away from that evil. So that's how I know that you don't understand. You really don't. You see, because you would understand how that impacts our household. You would understand how that makes me feel on the inside. Would you like me to go out there and start cussing and fussing? Would you like me to go out there flirting with everybody that I come in contact with? Would you like me to go take your money and go gambling with it? Would you like me to go and spend all sorts of hours everywhere doing my own thing and never telling anybody about it? But yet you continue to do these things. I'm just giving examples, okay? And so because you continue to do these things, this is why I know that your I understand is nothing more than lip service, okay? Turn away from it, turn away from it, or then you leave me no choice but to get away from you. That is a real truth for so many, for so many, you see, because that arguing back and forth, we can just hang that up, you see. Because it gets to a point where you exhaust yourself, you prematurely age, you end up comforting yourself, doing some things that you know you have no business doing. Is it really worth all that? Somebody says, I've been in this thing for years and Lord, I'm turning it over to you. I've had enough. I've had enough of my own agenda. My own agenda got me mixed up with this person who I really don't like or love. My own agenda got me in a position where I literally have to force to be a decent parent. You see, I mean, we got men who they're forcing themselves to be a father, to be there. You know, never wanted it, but. You know, this is my responsibility. God knows their secrets. There are women who I brought these babies in the world because there was pressure. There was pressure put upon me about not getting an abortion. But that wasn't my plan. But I'm doing the best that I possibly can. And I commend you. At least you're there. At least you're doing what you can. You're forcing yourself. It's a grind every day. But you're doing what God would want you to do. That's an agenda of God to be there as a parent. But it's not God's agenda to be a fool out there in them streets and forgetting about children. Out there cheating, creeping, stealing, lying, getting drunk, being in the bed with people. Or maybe not in the bed, but having them pleasure you. Mm. Jesus. Sometimes I tell you all, oh, I'll feel something in the spirit. And we're going to put all of those things in God's hands because somebody is hurt right now and somebody has been doing things they have no business doing. And so we're going to turn those names over to the one true God. Take a moment as that name comes to your mind. I want you to turn it over to the one true God right now. That person who has been rebellious in your family, at your workplace, or maybe even you right now, take that moment. To speak out that sin, ask the Lord to remove that sin in Jesus' mighty name. And some folks, I know that fear rises up when you know you got to confront someone. Fear rises up when you know that you might have to go to court. Fear rises up when you are fighting up against some things, right? Matthew 10, 28 says, and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Psalm 111, 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. You see? So if you are practicing the right thing, right? You are doing what is right. You have done a 180 in your life. Someone that you know is finally, finally getting it right. There lies the understanding. So when they say, I understand, and they're convicted, and they're doing what's right, I get it. I see it. 
Yes, I know you understand because you've turned from your wicked ways. You recognize where you've gone wrong. And if you don't recognize it, part of God's agenda is that you ask him, where am I sinning? With who am I sinning? What am I saying that is sin filled? Lord Jesus, and be prepared for him to tell you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Because you see, that healthy fear, going back to that parent and child, that healthy fear, in order for it to be cultivated, you got to be willing to put the consequences there. The consequences are that if you continue to do things at the school or at the workplace over rebellious teen, then one, you're going to miss out on your money. And I'm sure not going to give you any money. If you continue to do those types of things at the school that you have no business doing and your grades continue to slump, then you may just start to lose things. What do you mean lose things? Slowly but surely, every day that you come home, something's going to be missing from your room. What? Aren't you being a bit extra? No. Aren't you being a bit extra at school acting like a fool? You see? <laughs> <laughs> somebody's going to set up some consequences. Somebody's, you know, says they want to do something. They want to go somewhere, you know, let's do this. Let's do that. We got to have some money in order to do that. Don't we? <laughs> so somebody needs to start saving some money and stop spending so much. And when you see that person is no longer spending as much as they once were, you know, cut up credit cards and everything else. Oh, so you do understand. <laughs> Lord Jesus, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise, hallelujah. His praise, hallelujah. His praise, hallelujah, endures forever. Somebody take a moment and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Isaiah 41 10 fear not for I am with you be not dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you I will help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand somebody open up your heart to the one true God accept his son I don't know what this fight is sometimes it is rooted in all sorts of you know disrespect and disregard and dismissiveness from believers but you're not serving the Lord because of some folk you're serving the Lord because you finally understand that God has been with you every step of the way he was the one that strengthened you when you were on your sick bed he was the one that helped you when nobody came to your aid he is the one he is the one he is the one he said you move your I am out of the way and insert my I am he says I am your God receive it receive it receive it hallelujah thank you O heavenly father you see one of the biggest issues right now with man woman child they it the beast is that there is no fear there is no fear of the one who created both heaven and earth and so God says, I got to show myself strong. And it's like, oh, you know, for us, we say, oh, no, Lord, please, please, no, because we know somebody going down, somebody going down. Oh, no, oh, no. Okay, we know there's going to be some people that's going to end up leaving this earth prematurely because this is the God of the Old Testament. When he says he going to show himself strong, the old God of the Old Testament, you know, some people didn't get spared. And so he showed himself strong. He showed himself strong. We look on the news. And then we see God showed himself strong. We hear through the grapevine, somebody is going through something. Oh, God showed himself strong. Somebody says, oh, I need mercy right now. Mm -hmm. Because you start to see this family member got an issue. Then this one got an issue. Uh oh, I don't want that coming to my doorstep. I know that's why you better take that holy anointing oil and pray and ask the lord this is symbolic lord jesus of you passing over my doorstep <laughs> just as they did in the book of exodus i don't want death showing up at my doorstep you think i wasn't anointing every doorway and every window around that time when 2020 showed up hmm. i said symbolically i'm giving 
everything over to you. And I'm asking, Lord Jesus, that you cover this household and let death pass over. You see, I mean, I'm serious about that sort of thing. I fear the Lord because I know that he does some things that while man will say, oh, just keep the faith, trust in him. He's going to do some wonderful things in your life. And then the next thing I know is something totally different. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And meanwhile, that man who was, you know, saying all that positive stuff didn't know that there were some sins that needed to be turned over to the one true God. And that's how you know, too, that we got too many people who they're not real because they don't preach the kind of word that talks about things like hell and death and about God and the consequences of sin and to fear him. You see, this is why the old school 101 type of preaching back in the day was filled with fear because it goes back to scripture as was read to you today. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, Proverbs fourteen twenty seven, that one may turn away from the snares of death. Deuteronomy ten twelve says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul? Now, if that commandment, right, if that commandment, had to be given to them back then, the Israelites. What makes you think that that commandment doesn't still hold strong to this day? God is still speaking to his people, still saying from Israel to the United States and everybody else in between all around the world. What does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And what is man, woman, and they doing? They are out there fearing Satan, walking in Satan's ways, loving on all things related to Satan, serving Satan with all their heart and with all their soul. And some of these people, of course, are in leadership roles and they're sinking the ship. They are sinking the ship. What comes to mind is when they did that reboot of the Titanic, put that back in the theaters, right? We all know how that movie ends. Things don't just show up just to show up in movie theaters. Understand that. I've told some people this and they were like, what, what are you talking about? Satan has his agendas. His agendas he likes to brag about. He likes to put all over the place. He has the type of agendas where he speaks to his group. The people who are responsible for portion buttons, for making things happen. The movie theater, like so many other huge platforms, have always been like a billboard to the elite. The Super Bowl, even. These are places where Satan's agenda is communicated. And if you are discerning, you will be able to see what comes next. Okay? Sinking ship... Movies with lots of water, 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 lots of flooding, flooding, flooding has taken place. There has been movies that show planes going down. Planes here, planes there, planes going down. Okay. There has been movies dealing with earthquakes and as you can clearly see earthquakes satan's agenda but then there's god's god's agenda is saving individuals that should have been swept up should have been swallowed up should have lost everything 
I want someone to think about these things. The next time you're watching movies, you ask the Lord to show you some things about Satan's agenda and what you need to do to prepare in your city, in your state, in your town, in your borough, in your country. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I feel as if in the spiritual realm, there is this stirring up that is occurring, a waking up, if you will. Hallelujah. Thank you, O Heavenly Father. Psalm 86, 11, teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Teach me, that's your prayer, teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. For some individuals, the cold chills come over you because you know you've watched a lot of the mainstream media media and you've watched a lot of the movies you listen to podcasts you watch videos you're connecting the dots the cold chills come over you because you recognize that everything has been played out like a script it's all adding up isn't it and we said a long time ago that there are people that don't like people that hate people so much that they want them gone And that various groups were going to come up with all sorts of ways to take some people out of here. That there is, if you notice, there was a lot of the movies that came up of this fight between good and evil. You got the organization that wants to preserve humanity and you got the organizations that want to not preserve humanity and want to start all over. So fight good and evil, you see. And some folks go, well, wait a minute, where's God in all of this? He's in it. But remember Old Testament God? Mm Mm-hmm. Remember what I told you about the consequences of sin? Remember I told you about the I am type of gods that folks have? I've talked about this for years on and off, where they believe themselves to be their own God. Uh Uh-huh. And we talked about believers, lukewarm church. Okay. All of these things that people did over the years, didn't want to cut away certain groups, didn't want to cut off certain family members who were corrupting them, didn't want to do too much of anything. And as I mentioned in this audio about the parent who sets up the consequence for the teen, well, God has done this sort of thing, except his consequences are harsh at times. Hmm. What does it take for a man, for a woman to understand an almighty God? What does it take for those who call themselves they to understand how serious God is about fearing him? The Lord is your helper. Let's remove the fear of man. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Hebrews 13, 6. Serve the Lord with fear, Psalm 2, 11, and rejoice with trembling. So we've got those that have reached out to this demonic entity, And that demonic group for the hookup, for the help, for the word of knowledge, Lord Jesus, for a dream interpretation, to speak to the deceased on the other side. And they have angered the Lord. Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 14 says, when you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering. Anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets 
omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. This is who is in leadership. All over the world. We're talking about groups. We're talking about associations. We're talking about organizations. Of course, not every single itty bitty body. But there are those that are very powerful who do this sort of thing behind closed doors or in front of everyone through various media. Just to let you know who we serve. Revelation 22 15 says outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters. And everyone who loves and practices falsehood. Now you see why this almighty God is going to have to do a do-over with this land. You see? Is it making some sense? Lord Jesus. Leviticus 26, if a person turns to mediums and necromancers whoring after them, I will set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. This is what happened to some of the family members. And when they refused to go, when they when they refused to take their teachings and all of their witchy stuff on with them. The Lord ended up cutting off their sons and their daughters away from them. You see? You don't want to give up your sin? You want to make excuses for your sin, oh mother or father, sister, brother, cousin, aunt, uncle, grandmother, grandfather? You want to make all these excuses? Okay. You go ahead. But God's face is against you. God's face is against you. And sooner or later, you will be cut off from among your people while folks were looking at what was going on with me years ago. And then eventually those people who knew somewhat of what was going on in terms of my distance from the family, they will be gone. And then the new generation won't even have a clue as to what happened unless they listen to the audio messages. Why did they not like her? Why was she not coming around? Why did she not show up at funerals? Why was she, you know, here, there, and everywhere, but not with her family? We got too many sinful people, saints, as well as sinners in our family. We got too many people who they look to the future through fortune telling. They look to the future in ways that God says is not acceptable, but yet you call yourself a believer. 1 John 4, 1 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. I tested the spirits. I didn't care about no titles. The Lord put me up to testing the spirits. And when I tested the spirits, that's when the Lord showed me. That's when the Lord showed me. You are not dealing with someone who is of light. I know this I know this is hard to understand. But what you're going to do is you're going to slowly cut away and cut off. You're going to slowly distance yourself. And you're going to get rid of your little Gene Dixon stuff. Mhm. Mhm. Oh, and somebody goes, "Oh, now it all makes sense." Yeah, years ago. Many, 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 many years ago. When I was a newbie, the Lord convicted me on a huge book that I had, and it had all the zodiacs. And I could tell you from the top of my head who you could be matched up with. I could also keep you out of some trouble too. And I did not have any type of cards at that particular time that 
I could use um, like the tarot. These were some kind of cards that I don't even know. I don't even, I, to be honest, I don't even know what kind of cards these were. I didn't go looking for them. They showed up through a relative. And so that made things a little more interesting. And lo and behold, if those cards weren't right about some things. But can I tell you, there's a price to pay when you go messing around like that. Okay. And so before long, destruction showed up in the form of a man. A man who his assignment by Satan was to kill. Me. And those of you all who know about laboring to love an abusive mate know that I come to the Lord once again because <laughs> God had been calling me, but I came to the Lord and took him seriously and feared him through domestic violence. So when I'm telling you the, these different things in these audio messages, I'm not just talking just to be talking. I'm talking because I know that there are those entities out there that want you gone if you're a believer. And they will come up with all sorts of tricks, treats, and charms to get you to follow after them. To be more specific, now that I think about it, thank you, O Heavenly Father, for calling my mind to remembrance. The cards came when I was in high school. Those Zodiac books, the first group of them, I took them out as library books when I was in the fourth grade. So that business of Recruiting children at a young age, the demonic has a way of doing that early on. And it wasn't suggested. These books weren't suggested at the time when I came across them. I was just walking down the aisle in the fourth grade looking for different books to take out. So I moved from Judy Bloom and Encyclopedia Brown to what are these? And I saw things like Leo and Aquarius and Capricorn and, you know, Sagittarius and so on and so forth. And I started reading about each zodiac. It started in the fourth grade. And then by the time 1994, yeah, 1994, 95 rolled around. There was this stirring going on in my spirit. But I didn't truly give it all up until 1997. You see. So God has his agenda. But Satan had his. And his agenda was to use what I learned from the Zodiacs and all of these other things in order to get me to do bidding for him, you see. And for some of you all, he has his various tricks and treats and tools that he uses to tempt you. The temptation isn't the bad part as much as it is acting out on that temptation. I mean, we're going to be tempted all the time about something, but when you're acting out on it, that's when you're in trouble. So that is just a little background in terms of me. And I'm praying in Jesus' mighty name that those of you all who have seen and heard and experienced your share of foolishness, that you will get to a place where you will finally say, enough is enough. I've had enough. I'm going to ask God's will, his agenda for my life. And he will slowly but surely get you to where you need to be.
I thank you as always for taking time out to listen. You've been listening to YouTube, Inno Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving and thank you.